Good evening, everyone. Nice to see you here. Uh, today, I have a, a great pleasure of having Mr. Mahavir Chopra as our speaker. Uh, and this is our, for our ongoing series on wealth management. We thought insurance is a very important topic. And if we try and understand and fumble around and try to explain secondhand knowledge, it's better that somebody from the industry uh, speaks uh, the truth of what the industry actually is and how it's been run. So Mahavir, uh, since 2020, uh, has been working on a very interesting project. And I, I'll let Mahavir talk about it because he's very passionate about it. But it's called Beshak.org. Uh, and this is an insurance uh, advisory portal that they're building. Let Mahavir talk about it in detail. But a little bit of background on Mahavir. So he's had over 20 years of experience in the industry. He's a chartered accountant by qualification. And he has worked in uh, organizations like Thomas Cook, ENY, Piramal. And he was a chief business officer at CoverFox.com where he led the entire B2C business. Uh, on Twitter, you can follow him at the Mahavir. Uh, and Mahavir also uh, is a guest lecturer at uh, the insurance National Insurance Academy, uh, SPGL Institute. Uh, Mahavir, over to you. And I hope the audience will also have a great time asking you more questions on insurance. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Ronak, for the kind introduction. Uh, just take you through what uh, I've been doing so far. So some part of this is, has already been covered, so I will not take a lot of your time. Uh, I'm a qualified chartered accountant. Uh, right now, I don't do anything related to that, but yeah, that is what my history is. I've been in the digital distribution space in the insurance industry for around two decades. Um, been building uh, Beshak since 2020. Uh, we are an we call ourselves as an insider, but we are outside the industry. So like Ronak mentioned that uh, we're building something uh, as part of the industry, but uh, to a large extent, what we're doing is uh, being an insider, but outside the industry. I'll explain more. So we are a domain expert uh, helping customers get the right resources. Uh, we rate and curate plans, insurers and intermediaries. Right. Uh, more about this uh, information, uh, more about Beshak largely would be that uh, when we started off and I started off in distribution, what I realized is uh, being customer centric while being in the insurance industry and being a distributor, uh, we found a lot of gaps in that. So we were not able to like be customer centric and be a distributor in the insurance space. A uh, couple of examples that I was just giving uh, to Ronak while I was talking is that uh, in my last stint when I was with Coverfox and uh, we tried to create a very purest insurance broking setup. What we saw is that uh, whenever we put any information which was probably not to the liking of an insurance company or an insurance platform, uh, we would get a call the next day that uh, the chief distribution officer ne dekha hai, ek screenshot in our group mein, and please remove this. Right? Uh, and those kind of things used to happen and uh, largely the focus that I had and my endeavor in, in the insurance space was uh, it's a very complicated topic. It's a very complicated product. How can you make it more trustworthy? How can you make it more easy for people to buy? So that was the whole and whole uh, goal and aspiration that we had when we started Beshak. Beshak largely uh, is an independent platform. It's a non-distributor platform outside the industry, which basically wants to give the right resources uh, to customers to make the right insurance decisions. So for example, uh, we analyze, research, rate plans and we basically put them on a stack uh, of various parameters that exist and can exist in the industry, meaning whatever parameters are available for an insurance plan or an insurance product or an insurance company. And we basically rate those plans on our platform. Uh, because we don't have any association with insurance companies or any kind of insurance marketing related activities that we do like for example, advertisements or any kind of affiliate revenue, we can be true to what we are basically trying to share on the platform. So that's about Beshak. Um, that was... Yeah, there was one more slide somehow. Okay, fine. So there was one more slide that we had put basically. Uh, in a way, uh, if you've seen Mahabharat, uh, we are... Sanjay to a Dhritarashtra, right? Meaning that was a slide that was there. It was a thing picture that I'd found, but somehow it's, it's disappeared. Yeah. So we are outside the war. Uh, 
but we know what's happening in the space is how we think we are and how we i give a brief to my team when i'm talking about stuff is that we're trying to tell the truth while being outside the war zone today's topic and this topic is uh, about 13 untold truths about insurance um because of the heavy marketing and advertising you already know what the good things about insurance so i'm not going to bore you about the good things about insurance and uh, typically you just if you need that information you can get it very easily right because uh, obviously it being a business uh, any insurance company would always talk about the good side of the product the idea of this uh, presentation is to tell you certain things that i have learned and certain things that i feel probably could add value to you and to be able to understand the industry better right before getting into that topic uh, how i look at a, a customer and their experience with insurance is it starts with uh, basically a young guy who uh, basically feels that theek hai insurance hai mai samajh lunga i'll figure it out i'll go i'll read i'll download documents i'll i'll figure it out right uh, and what's the big deal i'll just spend two weekends to understand it right then comes the second scenario which is basically what when why right because the way insurance products are uh, are uh, designed today uh, for multiple reasons they are very very complex right they are quite complicated in their structure uh, in their format in the in the wordings that they use because they use let's say for an health insurance they use medical wordings also and they use legal wordings also so even if you're a doctor you won't understand it even if you're a lawyer won't have won't understand it you'll have to do both the degrees to understand it right and we've tried to do that but yeah you'll know if we know, we can do it uh, and then there is a third stage right the third stage is this is sab maya hai right uh, this is the stage at which we are today where uh, we feel is that as much as we are trying to grasp and understand the industry there is a lot of stuff that we today as learners of the industry we mentioned that we are a domain expert it's a uh, thing that my team mentioned but we consider ourselves as someone who's still trying to figure out the industry and it's a very dynamic industry with a lot of things happening the uh, the regulatory environment has changed significantly in the last two years and uh, the insurance companies that are getting introduced in the in the world of insurance is also growing and from that perspective there is a lot and lot that is happening and that's why this slide okay so enough of context uh, we we'll get into the topic the first truth which is the most important truth that uh, all of us should know and it is something that will give you context of understanding why a lot of things happen the way they happen and a lot of frustration that people would have about the space or uh, about hearing about the frustration about the space on social media and all that can get cleared by this truth uh before that i would like to have just one question uh which is basically to understand how many of you are uh currently insurance customers beyond car insurance like car insurance obviously is a mandatory product so i'm assuming you are legally compliant about that but i'm talking about the voluntary products so almost like 90% of the crowd i see is having some kind of insurance uh how many of you would say that you understood the entire product like out of uh let's say if you have to give your give uh Eight out of ten in understanding the product. How many of you would give that kind of rate? Okay. One more question I want to ask before understanding the uh, how much deep I can go in this. Is there anybody from the insurance space here right now? No. That's great. Actually, I didn't expect that. Yeah, but there would be people on the video who would watch this. But it's fine. We don't. The reason we started Beshak is that we want to be. and in a bit it about what we talk about the space and so i don't care but yeah if it's here then i'll have to face you after this session yeah so the first truth which everybody should understand and this is something that i took a while to understand is that the customer and you and i are not the center of the universe in insurance you're not the center of the universe uh things are not planned around you things are not planned around me things are planned very differently how things happen also happen very differently right so insurance is a promise right i'm just going to a little bit of basics sorry if it is boring you but this is important to understand insurance is a promise right by a stranger right ye jo bhi promise de raha hai wo koi saga nahi hai hamara to he is a stranger right 
insurer depends on someone you trust to sell this promise it does not directly come to you to sell if you see how lic works or any other product product work i why i mention lic is because it's the oldest and the largest player even it depends on someone you trust to sell that promise right insurers lend this trust to get that business so if you see their fortunes are completely dependent on this specific person right who is not you who is not me not you right i am not in the industry so i am i was this person but i am not this person anymore it is actually the intermediary right so this industry revolves around the intermediary even if the even if the insurance companies say that they revolve around customers they don't they revolve around the intermediary very clearly any questions so far or do we take questions at the end of this uh, we take at the end of this okay why this is important to understand is uh, a lot of times uh, we see this happening is that uh, when we buying the policy uh, the kind of experience is very different right and when you have seen people actually trying to use the policy the experience is very different right and this in this specific industry this happens the most right and that's why understanding this we go further into this in the second truth the second truth is the insurance insurance industry has different gods in different stages right uh there is a god who is a beautiful god which is the sales god right who will basically promise you a lot of things when you start off right they will tell you about the product they'll tell you about the benefits uh they'll tell you about uh how this is going to be so smooth a smooth ride for you right then there is a preserver who is basically the person who is a detached a uh, post sales person who is basically going to take care of your policy renew your policy so that's basically someone who chilled out cool you know is doing stuff whatever it's required and then obviously there is a destroyer who is the ruthless claims associate right things go out of hand and things change uh, when the third god appears which is basically the god who takes care of claims right uh understanding this is also super important because uh not very a lot of industries uh give a promise which is basically dependent on an event that will happen later right meaning uh this is a very peculiar industry where you are basically being promised something and it is dependent whether the promise will be delivered or not is dependent on certain variables certain probabilities right and the way the product is defined and distributed and sold to you is also very different from the same person when it comes to handling claims right so um important for people to understand here is you see this and you would have heard this happening in the market that uh, people have a very very lovely experience when they are buying the policy and they have a very very different experience when the claim happens right so please understand this well truth number 3 is all thumb rules are typically sales gimmicks uh what are thumb rules uh, typically anything which is going to give you a magic potion about insurance which basically tells you that okay do x plus y and you will get z uh or let's say for example the example that put here uh term insurance is 10x of your annual income just buy term insurance as 10x of your annual income or buy health insurance uh, you know as a it's sold as a prepackaged product right anything that is sold to you as something which is get it quickly and buy it quickly 130 rupees per day or 12 rupees per day as uh, cheap as a coffee right is something which you should avoid and basically uh, try to get uh, to to take a bite in right typically the point that i'm trying to make here is that insurance should not be bought like a shampoo uh not be bought like a sachet product uh because there are too many terms and conditions obviously in the product and it is super complex to understand for you and i and plus there are dimensions which i mentioned that you need to understand which is basically that the insurer works very differently when you buy the policy and how you claim in the policy and uh the earlier point that i mentioned which is that uh, it is typically very complex 
सॉरी फॉर द प्रोफेनिटी आई कैन यूज इट बट या एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द प्रीवियस लाइट विच इज बेसिकली टॉकिंग अबाउट थम रूल्स एंड थिंग्स दैट आर बेसिकली शोन एज थिंग्स विच टिपिकली विल मेक यू टेक अ क्विक डिसीजन अबाउट इंश्योरेंस द एग्जाम्पल कुड बी अ क्लेम सेटलमेंट रेशियो राइट क्लेम सेटलमेंट रेशियो एक्चुअली इज अ सुपर ब्रॉड रेशियो इट does not give you any reflection about the product does not give you any understanding of whether that insurance company is good or bad nothing right what is the definition of a claim settlement ratio claim settlement ratio's definition is how many claims an insurance company received and how many claims an insurance company paid right uh whether an insurance company rejected a claim is good or bad is something that is completely debatable insurance company's job is to reject claims also as a custodian of the money that they carry whenever a claim is not supposed to be paid and if a claim is basically out is outside the scope of the policy contract that they have signed with you they are supposed to reject the claim so the percentage of claims that show as rejected claims may be those claims right that are actually supposed to be uh, rejected and hence whatever you are seeing as the rejection part right is not something that is available qualitatively to analyze right whether it was a valid rejection it was an invalid rejection right the other thing is that uh, this number can basically be uh, in a way uh, played around with right and i will not go into the details of it right now but uh, it can be played around it in a way that you know for example there could be a practice where i can cancel the policy to remove it from the denominator right and uh, hence not show it as a part of the claim settlement ratio right plus there are a lot of interpretations that are being used by insurance companies differently by different insurance companies which could also come into play so that is what i've tried to mention here a good ratio does not mean an insurer is good a bad ratio may not mean an insurer is actually bad for example in health insurance right uh, there are so many terms and conditions of the policy uh, there are waiting periods in the policy which probably i'll uh, answer later whenever we discuss about it and there are multiple such conditions which are time bound and non time bound right these conditions basically can make a claim get rejected right now if i am looking at an insurer which has a lot of new customers versus a insurance company which has a a, a book which is quite old and Uh, i compare both of them there is a chance that the insurance company which has new customers will have a bad ratio because there are a lot of early time bound waiting periods in the policy where you cannot claim right compare that to another insurer which is an old insurer probably let's say 10 years old 20 12 years old and that insurer may have frauds right in the in in their policy and because of which they would have figured out that fraud and rejected a claim so again that is not payable and it's right for an insurance company to do that to remain viable also so again that's why it's not something that uh is worth it there could be a question that could arise out of this so i've just try to cover it here itself is what is the better way to get a 100% claim settlement ratio so i'll quickly cover it um declaring diligently when you're buying the policy is a thumb rule now i can say when we are talking about thumb rules in the past but these are real thumb rules which are process related thumb rules not specific thumb rules like that where you can actually if you do this job well when you are declaring something to the insurance company when you are buying the policy it will ensure that your claim settlement ratio can be very close to 100% right uh how does this work an insurance company typically needs information to assess risks right uh although let's say an insurance company may do a medical test that medical test does not cover everything about you right for example i'll give you a simple example of a person who uh, around 10 12 years ago in pune uh, went through a medical checkup right and after that uh, a policy was issued to that person and uh, this person was very casual when he declared stuff in the policy right proposal form mein jab declare kiya so he was very casual about it the policy got issued right in around 8 9 months of the policy getting issued uh this person was diagnosed with some kind of stomach related cancer right and uh when this person actually went and started claiming for those hospitalization expenses what happened is that the insurance company came to know that this person did have a certain kind of stomach ache 
which he was basically talking to people before buying the policy and he had not mentioned it in the insurance company's basically proposal form right in this case a medical test was done so the customer was basically kind of contesting that you've got got a proper medical test done how can you basically blame me for something like that but the point is that a medical test won't cover everything about you and won't cover like from head to toe about all the problems that typically you would know or your doctor would know right and hence basically making right declarations which are beyond the medical test are super super important second is basically keeping clear records right uh, a lot of unclaimed uh, money is lying with insurers today and finally with the government uh which is basically due to this mistake which is not keeping records and not informing the nominee about basically having a policy and uh not uh basically keeping it in a place which is basically retrievable by by that nominee this is another thing that is a good tip that uh, i've learned learned very recently uh in my conversations with insurance companies is informing about an onset of a disease right uh me myself i would let's say if you would have asked me one year ago i would say that uh, you don't need to inform an insurer about a uh, disease that happens after you bought the policy the reason being that contractually you are not supposed to uh, keep the insurer informed so the policy document does not really say that you need to keep me informed about onset of a disease that happened after you bought the policy right uh, but this is a really good practice and a good hack that i would basically uh, uh, give you today is that let's say if i have a policy for my father and let's say when when i bought the policy let's say he was 60 years old and let's say 64 65 may uh he was diagnosed with probably uh let's say uh, uh let's say a stomach related problem right or some some problem related to stomach it's good and a very good practice to basically just inform the insurer through a mail on the on their customer care id that hey do you know this is what has happened or during renewals basically there is a place where you can basically inform the insurer about this how this helps is because when there is a claim that happens let's say in this specific case that i'm talking about let's say 6 years later my father had a stomach related issue and let's say the claim happens at the year 10 uh an insurer wants to understand when this onset happened i have already informed the insurer and hence uh claims are much smoother because of this because they don't have to then go about a uh investigating to understand whether this disease happened before buying the policy right so typically the same example that i gave some time back is that this customer had a claim rejection because he had a stomach ache related thing which he did not declare which finally ended to be diagnosed as cancer there's a point that i already mentioned when i covered clear records is that educating your family about the products and the policies that you have educating the family about the declarations that were made when buying the policy is a very very important thing to understand uh a lot of health insurance claims get rejected because um the person who's bought the policy is actually the person who's hospitalized and the doctor when the patient is getting admitted talks to the relative of this uh patient and asks about history of basically diseases right and what happens is uh if this person is not well informed about the kind of diseases this uh patient has the family member that is getting hospitalized and mention something which is not in confirmation with what was actually mentioned when the policy was bought it can lead to a lot of confusion disputes and claim rejections right uh so keeping a record straight about this uh is something which the onus lies with us as customers and the relative and the relatives and the family members of this customer like when i have bought a policy let's say 10 years ago all the declarations that i have made also is something that i have basically ensured that i have kept my family members my wife informed about them so that whenever a hospitalization happens they are able to keep that same keep that record straight with the with the doctor which finally will inform the insurance company uh what is a negative kind of a scenario that could happen right uh, so typically there have been cases where let's say the patient's direct family members are not there and probably let's say someone who is a little extended family member who's taking care of the 
a person and taking admitting the family member and that person basically mentions something uh saying that shayad inko bp hai right and the doctor basically has to mention right if you've seen documents medical documents it will say history of bp right and uh it is unnecessary to give such information uh if you don't know about it or it is unnecessary for anybody who has a partial understanding of specific declarations that are made to basically give this information and uh although this may sound uh, a very small scenario or a very minor nuance that i'm talking about this happens a lot right so that's why i thought i'll mention about it truth number 5 good health health insurance uh, comes with a limited period offer so a lot of people uh, basically feel that they can buy health insurance whenever they want right uh, uh, typically people who are covered with a company health insurance uh, they feel that i am already covered with a company health insurance and why should i basically buy a policy and have a duplicate cover uh, that's really not true uh, because in case of an onset of a disease that happens for that person or any person in the uh, family uh, getting a comprehensive policy becomes very very complicated right uh, for example uh, as simple as someone having diabetes there are policies that you get excluded out of and you cannot th- those companies or those insurance companies don't give policies to people who have diabetes right so uh today we are living in a world where diseases uh, uh happening to someone in the age of 25 has not become very uncommon right i have uh probably it's a very uh, uh i have people around me i don't want to basically say which group of people but uh, i have people around me who are 24 25 who are now diagnosed with thyroid right there are people very soon they are getting diagnosed with like women are getting uh, diagnosed with pcos very quickly right uh, a lot of other diseases related to gastro is happening much earlier than probably let's say 10 years ago with for people who are younger today right meaning who are in their 25 so that's something which basically is the reason why i wanted to mention this is that a good health insurance a really good comprehensive health insurance comes with a limited period offer it will be available to you only to Uh, only till the time that you are completely healthy you do not have any health issues and your family does not have any health issues as soon as there is any specific health issue that happens uh you you may not get a policy like for example any kind of autoimmune disease meaning sorry i'm talking about little medical terms here but only people who have this autoimmune disease know that it's become so difficult for them to get a policy they don't get a policy at all right you don't get any insurer to get a policy uh people who have for example family members who have epilepsy right uh which is basically a a a, a neuro disease uh again find it very very difficult to get a policy and this is something that can happen to anybody right uh, so that's why it's very important it's also inversely proportional to age to so the opportunity to get a good policy is proportionate to your age as you grow older the good policies that are available probably you may not get right again this is something that is very important to understand is that insurers can make really good money out of good comprehensive policies only when they put filters in terms of who can basically buy those policies today there are excellent products that are available very very comprehensive products that are available but insurers want only very very healthy young families to be basically enter into that policy right there was recently a policy that was introduced which has no waiting periods uh, absolutely no waiting periods and it does covers you from day 0 for even diseases and everything but it has a very very strict policy in terms of whom they will add in the in the group of customers right so that's an example truth number 6 this is something that is not mentioned here for the sake of creating some kind of uh fun this is actually true health insurance actually does not cover health uh it covers hospitalization right uh very important to understand this is a lot of hospitalizations also don't get covered under health insurance that is something that i will cover but 
largely health insurance covers only active treatment in a hospital so for example if you are getting treated in the hospital for tests or for monitoring purposes right uh let's say i have a chest pain in the night i go to the hospital and uh in the hospital uh, the doctors say that okay we've done all the vitals checked everything everything looks fine but we would like you to be or and get hospitalized for one day because we would like to monitor you right this may not get covered under health insurance health insurance basically covers you for active treatment where there is some kind of cure that is happening in a in 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 the hospital which cannot happen at home right very important to understand this it won't cover you anything like i said that could be treated in home or opd so anything that can be treated at the opd room of an insurance uh, of a of an insurance opd room of a doctor or basically be treated at home like for example if by taking oral medicines or basically uh by uh some tests happening in the opd section of the uh hospital or let's say if there is an accident and let's say someone has got fractured like they have a fracture in their hand and they get a plaster done in the hospital in the emergency room of the hospital those things don't get covered three things need to happen one is that there should be a treatment the second is that the treatment should be active and third is that it has to happen in a hospital right the fourth one which i would like to give with an example is won't cover hospitalizations that don't follow standard protocols so this is something that i learned during covid and something that although i had read about it i never had an example for this uh so during covid uh aiims basically uh, released a uh, a kind of a circular which said that who can who should get hospitalized and who should not get hospitalized right which basically had three parameters one of the two parameters i remember right now one is basically the oxygen level the second is basically the the temperature right how much temperature that person has uh so a lot of people got hospitalized beyond this right during covid who didn't have a temperature which was in that threshold or basically did not have that oxygen level uh insurance companies at that time a lot of insurance companies took a call to go by what was recommended by aiims right because it's the standard protocol and that is what decides whether this hospitalization should happen or not and basis that an insurance company can reject a claim so basically uh a doctor also has to follow the standard protocol standard protocols to basically decide whether a claim uh whether a hospitalization should happen or not and there will be judgments that obviously will be involved but this is contestable by an insurance company if they feel that this could have been treated at home or been treated at opd right truth number 7 70% of health insurance features are frills which you probably may not use or may use just once in a while right uh why i want to talk about this is uh largely because if let's say you are upgrading your health insurance or if you plan to port your health insurance uh a lot of features which look very attractive on brochures may not really be useful on ground and there will be a lot of features which actually are core features which may basically be just one line in the in the in the policy document or in the brochure right uh there are two kinds of features that health insurance has that you need to understand one is that real covers right for example organ transplant right is a real feature and it being a very very high cost treatment typically i'm assuming everybody would imagine that an organ transplant would be very expensive that is something that you need to understand well compared to for example frills right most of the frills that are being created uh are largely created as talking points these are talking points which help an intermediary or an advisor basically talk about them and basically create interest and curiosity in your mind about this feature being there like for example i mentioned restoration right it's a great feature and maybe in the long run it would be very useful but today when i am talking about it the idea is that for example what does restoration mean i'll just take a minute of time to explain is that let's say you have a health insurance of let's say 5 lakh rupees and it has a restoration feature it will basically say that uh, in case that some insured gets exhausted with a little bit of conditions that are applied that entire some insured will get restored again for the second time right so it's like an unlimited cover that it will sound like 
obviously there are terms and conditions and I won't take you through that because that will become a it in it itself can become a session uh so this kind of a feature if you have a great cover if you have bought an adequate health insurance for your family which is basically for which will take care of retirement times like for example someone who's buying a policy today and he's basically or she has bought a policy uh, understanding the inflation that would happen let's say over 20 years and then basically bought a cover which is enough for that inf inflation proof for that period of time then this restoration feature is not that greatly important compared to the organ transplant cover why uh, like let's say organ transplant cover has a has a limit of let's say 2 lakh rupees in the policy and there is a restoration feature that you've seen and you actually feel you've been sold more about restoration and less about organ transplant you may end up buying the wrong policy right truth number 8 this is one of my favorites and uh, probably a lot of you because you are already a buyer of health insurance you already are a customer of health insurance you would know about this is our experience this uh, is cashless is not an emergency feature it's not a prepaid card it's not something that you would be able to swipe and basically go to the hospital and get admitted. Uh, health insurance works around conditions which we talked about, right? And there are too many conditions and there are complexities about those conditions and hence goes through an approval process whenever you go to the hospital to get treated. Uh, it would depend upon multiple things. It would depend upon how your policy is, what kind of policy you have. It would depend upon the complexity in the policy. It would depend upon how the hospital is submitting records to the insurance company to get that cashless done. And typically it takes around four to six hours minimum and it could take even a day, right? And a lot of people, if anybody has experienced hospitalization would have seen that it could take eight hours. Uh, typically you may have to even postpone your discharge to get a, uh, you know, a cashless done. So never depend on cashless for emergencies uh, is something that we typically recommend. It's a great feature and a convenient feature which ensures that uh, documents get transferred to the insurance company through the hospital and you don't have to maintain those documents. And money gets transferred from the insurance company to the hospital so you don't have to manage the money. Right? It's a great feature but it's not an emergency feature that at night at let's say 2 a.m. you'll be able to use it. Right? There is a basic reason for that is that uh, although insurance companies have a rule that they are supposed to maintain, maintain a 24 by 7 call center for claims, but hospitals don't have that rule. So hospitals typically have an insurance desk that typically closes at around 8 p.m. Right? After 8 p.m., if you're getting hospitalized or if someone is getting hospitalized, they will say that, Sir, kal aapka subay, nao baje aap process kar sakte ho claim. Right? So even if it was possible, in even the largest hospitals in the in the in the city of Bombay, you will not find any hospital desk in the hospital which will take care of insurance claims for the entire night. Right. So that's why this is very important to understand. One more point would be it will depend upon efficiency on both sides. Like right? how efficient the hospital is in submitting papers, how efficient the insurer is to basically reply back. Right. Hence, you should not look at it as a prepaid card. Tot number nine, I'll just uh, drink some water and yes. So most important document in an insurance policy, like insurance cover and insurance experience that you have, an insurance service if you want to call it, what according to you would be the most important document? It's probably a brochure, no? policy document terms and conditions like you said or is it the proposal form it is the proposal form like you said uh, proposal form actually is more important than the policy to a large extent right? uh, insurer is basically evaluating you basis the information that you provide them and basis that they are going to give you a cover or not right at the time of claim, if they come to know anything that you mentioned in the proposal form, which is different from the truth and uh, basis which they issued a policy to you, which I explained with an example earlier, which was about the stomach ache example. 
they have the right to not only not give you the claim but also to cancel the policy right so a proposal form becomes even more important than a policy document and this is the same proposal form that probably a lot of people here or i know a lot of people in my family and people around me uh who have just signed because of the tick marks or those cross marks that the agent gave ki sir yahan pe char jagah pe sign karu baki main bhar lunga but that's a very big mistake and if there is something that has been left out when you're buying a policy and you just signed on those cross marks uh without even reading the form it it typically could uh be a shock if if you miss something when there is a claim right um what are the two things that you can do when you are basically looking at a proposal form is that either you fill it yourself that is the best thing to do uh be very diligent about filling that form uh a lot of people know stuff about them but they are not very clear about their family members uh specifically if you are buying policy for parents who don't live with you right and even who people who have parents who live with them uh there is a generation of people and i think even we are going to be the same is that who live in denial right and uh, matlab i have this kind of situation very very normal and kind of a thing that you would have also seen is that puthe chacha aapko diabetes hai kya kuch blood pressure hai kya nahi nahi beta kuch bhi nahi hai i don't have any problems uh aap koi dawai lete ho kya ha ha main sugar ki dawai leta hu right this is a very very common thing right uh so being diligent and asking the right questions to your family members going through their medical file understanding what they have basically been diagnosed with probably talking to the family doctor uh is a very very good practice before you buy a policy right uh even parents don't know they are like my 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 father is almost like 74 75 now he is taking almost like i have a list of tablets always with me in my uh, mobile phone in the whatsapp but if i basically sit down and ask him ki ye kiske liye 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 probably he will not remember now but he is taking those tablets right so that's why it's very important for us to not just go by whatever is here say uh, from our family members also but do a lot of homework and then basically buy a policy truth number 10 uh this is mentioned in the wrong format buying cheap insurance from banks employers is not smart actually sorry got little typo error uh a lot of people uh would have experienced or seen that there are these policies that are available through banks which come out to be very cheap compared to the policies that are available in the open market right uh these are policies which are usually uh, group policies right uh there is a specific construct of a group policy that people should understand very clearly as a customer one is that these are not lifetime plans these are one year plans right a group plan by the regulation can only be a one year plan every year this plan basically goes through negotiations discussions between the insurance company and the group owner it could be a bank it could be your employer it could be any other company which is basically giving an insurance to you right any other uh, uh brand which is basically using its group of people to buy insurance for you right it's negotiated on a one year basis it's a one year plan and the most important thing is that this plan can be hence because it's a one year plan it can be changed the insurer can be changed and the plan can also be dropped right uh because it's a one year plan what happens is that every year it goes through negotiations like i said and if the loss ratios that the insurer is seeing is very very high that insurer could withdraw right and say that i'm not covering you for the next year and there is no such contract that can be signed where you can basically guarantee that this plan will be renewed that insurer will renew it probably a new insurer will come into picture there have been cases if you go on google and just search for group insurance plans that have been withdrawn you will see a numerous number of plans which got dropped and new plans never got introduced by that bank right so there was a gap between insurer introducing a plan through a group policy and then getting withdrawn and then a new policy not coming into picture 
what happens with this is that suddenly you had a plan which was great in terms of price great in terms of features but next year suddenly you don't have a plan compare that to a policy which is a personal insurance policy which you should not substitute a group plan with is that a personal policy by regulation has a lifetime renewable guarantee right uh for any reason an insurance company cannot reject renewals of your policy unless they prove a fraud right they will have to prove that you've basically either made a misrepresentation when buying the policy they will have to prove some kind of fraud that has been made when bought the when you bought the policy only then can basically an insurance company cancel your renewals right basis claims an insurance company cannot cancel your renewals like for example i have a, let's say a policy someone has a policy for 20 years and that person gets diagnosed with cancer next year an insurance company cannot cancel the policy so it comes with this this is and this is a it comes from regulation right so all health insurance policies in india basically are lifetime renewable this is not linked to any association and brand and hence whenever you exit from that brand or you exit from that bank you are not basically linked to that association and hence you don't become not part of that policy right for example an employer policy is continued and you have the coverage only till you are a part of that employer right as soon as you leave the company very few policies would have let's say government policies are there where there are retired people covered and all that but usually in private sector you will see that a policy ends as soon as your employment ends right similarly if there are such policies like for example personal accident policy which cover disability right there are such kind of policies which say that uh, you need to be an active customer of the bank for that coverage to be active right so if i have not made any transactions in that bank in the last 3 months through a swipe or through a payment or through a withdrawal or anything then i become an inactive customer and hence i don't have that benefit right uh, so these kind of things are also there so that's why linking it to a bank or a brand and buying a policy should be a last resort if you're not getting a personal policy for whatever reasons that i mentioned earlier for some disease or some reason uh it's or it's becoming unaffordable for that person to even buy a policy then it can be like a last resort but otherwise it should be avoided number 11 buying online saves money hence is smart right again ye myth mein likha tha isliye wrong ho gaya uh buying online only for discount is a wrong uh thing to do uh very simply because insurance is not a policy right in my view insurance is all about claims right at the time of claims uh if you have any kind of disputes or any kind of issues um uh, and you have bought a policy directly from an insurance company you are on your own right you do not have anybody you are basically dealing with someone who has a battery of lawyers who basically has the entire wherewithal of understanding the insurance product on one side and you are a customer on the other side who basically someone who does not have enough knowledge as much as that person has right uh if you're buying from a large online intermediary also there are chances that you usually will hit toll free numbers right and toll free numbers may one thing is very important to understand is that to a large extent i have run these toll free numbers so i can tell you this with a lot of confidence that they are being trained on to on let's say two weeks of training hota hai uh, which they have largely a good company will have two weeks of training and hence they are not very competent to basically have an opinion about your claim they will be able to tell you yes and no answers they will be able to tell you uh, probably what is mentioned in their faq document from which they can search and answer questions to you but they'll not be able to give you an opinion about whether this claim is payable or not second is the most important that they do not have any skin in the game when the claim happens right so we talked about those three gods right first god was basically selling the policy but the god changes when the claim happens that person does not have any skin in the game right when the claim happens to get the claim paid uh is not something that they are basically going to be interested in as a toll free right they it's a task it's a it's a ticket for them they need to clear tickets and that's how it is right that's the truth truth number 12 this is about 
section 45 and moratorium clause i don't know how many of you know about this but i wanted to cover this because it's very important uh there are two specific regulations that are there in the insurance space specifically in health and in life insurance section 45 is in the insurance act and it basically talks about claims that are coming from a death benefit point of view right so agar there is any claim which is for life insurance and it's a claim related to basically death which is basically in the life insurance parlance called death benefit uh that claim cannot be rejected the section 45 says that the claim cannot be rejected after three continuous years of renewals for any scenario any scenario right even in case of term insurance which is a typical policy that i'm assuming a lot of people here would have it cannot even be rejected for a misrepresentation even be rejected for a fraud as per the regulation right the regulation says what for whatsoever reason you cannot reject a claim after 3 years of continuous renewal this is for death benefit and life insurance policies this is a clause that we should know and we should educate our family members about and very very important for family members to know why i'll tell you uh the other is moratorium clause uh this is in health insurance uh in moratorium clause basically says that uh after 5 years of continuous renewal an insurance company cannot reject a claim for claim for misrepresentation like i mentioned unless they prove a fraud right in this there is this condition of unless they prove a fraud so 3 years in case of term insurance no exceptions 5 years in case of health insurance but except fraud right fraud matlab in technical terms mein jayenge to fraud basically is a uh, something which is done willingly right knowingly right and is done for personal gain that is what you have basically an insurer will have to prove the onus will lie with the insurer to prove that there was a fraud to not basically uh, pay a claim right so these are two rights that all of us here sitting have and we should be knowing about and the other thing is our family should be knowing about specifically the first one right uh why is because of this right uh in truth in reality on ground even after this being such a clear condition where it's mentioned in black and white that there are no exceptions life insurance companies are investigating claims even after 3 years of continuous renewal right they are taking time to pay claims they are doing investigations they are basically saying i have a right to investigate right uh i will have to pay the claim but i will investigate it's very complicated not sense does not make sense but they do this right now in the case of a scenario where a family member is fighting for this and they don't know this clause right they may actually feel that okay ye reason ki wajah se claim nahi pay hoga but if they know this clause they can actually fight it out saying that you know 3 years ho gaya hai and insurance act does not allow you to have any exceptions and hence you will have to pay the claim come what may right so it's very important to understand that same in case of 5 years in case of health insurance once 60 months have got completed an insurer's onus will be to basically be able to prove that there was a fraud made by the customer and not an innocent mistake like i am missing something i filled and given information about three things but i missed something an insurance company cannot reject the claim unless they are able to prove that there is a fraud right so this is subject to the second one obviously like i'm assuming you would have understood is that there is a gray area and if there is a large claim an insurance company will basically take that route but it's important to understand that these are the rights that you have right so we come to the last truth uh truth number 13 um uh, after this we end this this largely will help you we are setting the context of whatever questions you may have so let me complete this and we'll come to that an intermediary can make or break your insurance experience right um uh, having the right intermediary finding the right intermediary finding the right insurance advisor is a work that someone should do as much in in diligence as much as you're doing to find the policy uh why it goes back to truth number 1 right truth number 1 may we've mentioned and we talked about that the customer in an insurance industry is actually the intermediary right the intermediary can actually shake things in an insurer much faster in our my view uh, given my experience than as as customers so having the right intermediary to basically 
represent you, right, plays a very, very important role in two ways. One is that being diligent when buying the policy, right? Whatever we spoke about, right, where we talked about uh, following the right process, buying the policy when ensuring that the right questions are asked, the right declarations are made, right? We mentioned, we talked about that. Uh, ensuring that records are being met, kept properly, right? Filing the entire documents that are available and in ensuring that the insurers has been informed about everything that is possible to be informed. Educating the customer about basically that these are the things that you should know and these are the reasons why claims can be rejected. All that can be done by a good advisor. Similarly, a bad advisor basically can screw up things, right? In terms of not doing all the things that we mentioned, right? So these are the things that I mentioned about. Advisor can ensure right process of buying the policy. Good advisor can be diligent in the critical process of basically ensuring that you're diligent when basically processing the entire policy. And like we said, the most important document is the proposal form. Filling that proposal form is a job, right? Filling it right is a proper job. It's a, it's a service that good advisor will provide you. And a good advisor will be diligent in the documentation and record keeping process while buying the policy and at the time of claims. Right. So your experience, whether it's an amazing experience or an average experience or a below average experience, one of the reasons is going to be a, having a good product, buying it on the right time. Second is basically having the right advisor with you. Right. So that's about it. I'm done. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much, Marvin. Uh, We'll take the questions from the audience in the room first and then we will go to the Zoom audience if they have any questions. I am here for the questions uh, if you really ask me. This was basically trying to set context, uh, put some basically thoughts in your mind so that you it triggers questions in your mind. So yeah, it will be fun to answer questions. Excellent presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, my question was on the, how do you see, you know, the role of TPAs okay. in the entire, you know, health insurance landscape? Right. If there's a chain of thought which says that uh, uh, insurers ideally want to, you know, outsource it to TPAs because right. they want to f focus on their core functions, mm -hmm. which is marketing and, you know, setting right. the policies. Right. And there's another chain of thought which says that, you know, some insurance want to keep everything in house. Okay. The likes of Star Health, I think, deal yeah. deal yeah. with it, you know, themselves. So, how do you see the the role of you know TPS in this entire uh, right. landscape? So, uh, from a customer's lens, actually, it does not matter. Meaning, there are really good TPS who process very well, and there are really bad uh, insurance companies that do not process claims when even being in house, they don't manage it well, right? Uh, largely. Uh, Claims is about the brief that that insurance company as a management has given to the claims team. Whether it is outsourced or in-house does not matter, right? If the brief is very clear, right? That these are the reasons why you should play a claim. These are the reasons you should not pay the claim. Follow the policy contract and pay claims if they are payable. Not payable, don't pay, right? Uh, and specific SLAs that have si been signed that this is the time of type of responsiveness that should be there. This is the kind of uh, time you will take to take care of escalations and those things. It entirely depends upon the brief that the management is giving to that department, whether it is in-house or outsourced, right? Uh, it is a core function. So most large insurance companies have now uh, moved uh, uh, their entire claims operations in-house. Even the likes of uh, a long time ago, Bajaj, uh, even now ICIC, HDFC, all these large companies now have their own set up right uh, from a customer's lens from our lens it does not matter like I said uh, from a uh, point of view of choosing an insurer also it does not matter because finally like I said it is about the brief and it is about the SLAs and how serious the management is about basically claims right so in both the cases it could be good and both the cases like in each of the cases it could be good or bad but essentially, do you see the role diminishing over a period of time? Or the TPS is... role? Yeah. So, if you see the a couple of the large TPS that exist, they do have a lot of might 
because because they aggregate across insurance companies they're able to negotiate uh, uh processes uh, technology and uh, also rates much better than even a single insurance company so insurance companies do basically uh, borrow this power from large tpas uh, to to solve for these three problems right uh, so tip, do, so uh, whether tpas will exist or not if that is the question that you are asking i think the role will you know be enhanced or diminished say in the next 4 or 5 years right so my view is that large tpas will exist because they have basically been able to aggregate a good amount of uh, business and hence have negotiating power uh, with hospitals which is a very important thing to basically solve for uh, so i think both will coexist depending upon how it works also in group health insurance a lot of insurance uh, customers which are basically corporates they want a tpa and not have it in house uh so the negotiation that happens between a uh, a large company who's buying insurance for their employees and the insurance company is not only about basically uh, uh the plan and the product but also who will be the tpa right so tpa is going pitch directly to corporates also because they do provide a lot of good services right so they will exist probably the kind of channels that they will use would change and large tpas will exist because of the negotiation power that's how i look at it and just one more question sure. you mentioned the onset you know or disclosing the onset of a deceased right. the insurer right so would that change the the insurance premium in in the subsequent years right. in any way right right i should have mentioned that thank you for asking this question no it cannot change anything for you it won't change the policy it won't change uh uh, uh it won't change your terms and conditions it won't won't change the premium also the only thing that will change is that the insurance company may not offer you upgrades right so let's say if you have a policy which is 10 lakhs and there is a specific disease that has happened and you are now you have informed the insurer and now the insurer will not offer you an upgrade but that is anyways the case when you upgrade an insurance company will basically ask you for information about your current health medical history and medical conditions and hence it will anyways get covered so in a very short answer of this in a very short answer of this would be no they do not make any impact and what are the main prime i mean couple of primary points to keep in while mind while choosing a health insurer if you were to just list out you know sure, the sure. top so, two or three like like i said there are two aspects of a health insurance one is that there are core features and there are non core features so largely you should focus on core features which are these core features is what i can answer uh, largely sum in short right is the most important feature that Uh, you should understand coverage right in the policy it's very very important that you choose the right coverage calculate not based on today's uh, uh, requirement but based on the requirement that you will have when you probably are hitting an age when you will need health insurance so typically 55 uh, ke age mein what is the kind of health insurance you will need is something that uh, you should uh, you should look at when you are buying health insurance specifically because upgrades are not easy upgrades can basically not be available because of a health condition so that's why buy the appropriate adequate cover when you start right uh, apart from this uh, the second most important core thing is to avoid policies which have any kind of financial limits or any kind of limitations right uh, three of the most common limitations that i have seen is one is the limitation on room uh, category or room rent right what happens is that when you buy a policy with a, a category limit or a, a financial limit in in the kind of room that you can choose uh, it may look great today right because probably let's say if a policy says that it will cover you uh, for a room of 10000 rupees per day it may look great today ke yaar 10000 mein to mil jayega koi bhi hospital mil jayega but as inflation hits your basically your cover is diminishing in two ways one is that an insurance company pays you claims uh, when they calculate claims they also proportionately deduct the entire claim amount basis the room rent eligibility that you have right so for example if your room rent eligibility is 5000 rupees and you have gone to a room which is costing you 10k uh, all the other expenses apart from room charges also will also proportionately be reduced by 50% when you get paid right uh, similarly in case of category uh, category caps right seeing that private room hi milega and let's say 
during COVID, this happened a lot that private rooms were not available, right? Only higher rooms were available. And people who got hospitalized in those higher rooms, again, the difference between that private room, which is the lowest category private room available versus whatever room you're taking, whatever is the financial difference in that, proportionately, the insurance company has a right to deduct from your policy. So that is one kind of financial limit. The other is basically treatment limits, right? An insurance company could put limits on treatments. Is it saying that cataract, I will give only 48,000. For, let's say, uh, uh, breakage of bones, I'll give only 2 lakhs. For, let's say, cardiac surgeries, I'll give this much. Cancer surgeries, I'll give this much. Robotic surgeries, I'll give 50% of some insured. That should be avoided because today, again, as inflation progresses, these things will hit you more than having a restoration kind of a feature. Third is, uh, there are very, uh, there are list of treatments that are covered under something which is called daycare. Right? Daycare is basically uh, due to technology advancements, a lot of treatments now get completed in the same day. You get discharged on the same day. Right? Uh, I have even heard, I am not sure about it because obviously I am not a medical professional, but I have even heard angioplasty sees discharges on the same day. Right? It's getting so advanced that on the same day you can get discharged. They keep you for no day, but you can actually technically get discharged in one day in angioplasty also, which is a heart operation. Uh, a lot of old insurance policies used to have a limitation on being covering only 24 hours hospitalizations, right? They did not cover daycare. Then they started adding this feature, which is called daycare, but a list of treatments that are covered. Now, I have tried analyzing these daycare uh, treatments with large, uh, not large, sorry, very, very senior doctors. Uh, I've also tried to basically break it down for basically simplifying it for the uh, common audience, but it's just not possible to basically do that. Insurers have like some insurer will have a 120 list. Someone would have a 700 list and 800 list, right? Taking a policy which does not have a list is the best policy. Right. So there are certain insurance companies which are giving comprehensive policies which say all daycare procedures covered. So whenever you're looking at a policy, ensure that these things, it does not have a limit. Like third, another example could be organ donor, organ transplant. Organ donor is a is a feature which does not cover your job. So let's say if someone is getting an organ transplantation done, your part of the transplantation, if you are getting the, uh, the organ, is covered under your health insurance. What this covers is the organ donors part of the treatment, right? They need to also go through a surgery. Uh, there are policies which cover this up to the sum in short and there are policies which have a limitation on this. Right? So you should be careful about these kind of financial limitations. So there are multiple such examples that I can take, but yeah, this is the crux of it. So largely financial limits, understanding financial limits, understanding what kind of cover that you're taking, these are the two most important things. And third, obviously, is understanding the entire waiting periods and exclusions well, right? In terms of expectation management that, okay, this is what is not going to be covered for me. If this these three things are well understood, then you will not have a bad experience in terms of expectation of buying a health insurance and how it will actually pan out when you make a claim that way. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for an excellent presentation. Thank you. Uh, my question actually is uh, from the lead that you gave me, <laughs> which is, you know, the last slide. Okay. And about choosing an advisor. So uh, right. you did mention that uh, online aggregators don't have skin in the game and, and therefore uh, may not be a great choice to go to. Could you comment on banks? Uh, sure. Because uh, they have similar problems. I think right. skin in the game seems to be an issue. Relationship managers keep changing. Right. Knowledge levels are not very high. Uh, that's point one. And if uh, that is also not a great go-to place, then that leaves us with agents. Right. Uh, if agents are the uh, right uh, way to go, uh, agents do not have the entire bouquet uh, because I think there are restrictions in terms of regulations, in terms of how many policies, how many, which, which insurance companies you can sell. And therefore, they end up selling you the product that they have hmm. rather than what you need. And, uh, you know, I don't have, I have limitation of choice. Right. So how do you balance these considerations uh, while making the decision? Sure. So answering your first question about banks, uh, banks are the worst places to buy insurance. The worst, right? Usually, they, they are 
they don't a understand insurance when they're selling it second is that they have zero skin in the game an aggregator still has a, a skin in the game because they have a reputation at stake they worry about their reputation banks don't worry about the reputation i can show you cases where there are disputes where customers have written to the bank and bank has clearly decoupled themselves from the dispute saying that mera koi lena dena nahi hai right and this does not happen only with government banks private banks it happens right across it's just a product that they sell i'm very clear about this that i have not seen a bank which is basically standing with the customer when things go wrong right is the worst i would still rate aggregators and that's why i caveated when i said it. it's not necessary that whatever i said is black and white right there could be an aggregator who's currently very serious about claims and could set up a very very good team of claims uh, professionals who could manage claims internally but what i've seen is that at scale right when the scale increases the kind of people that you can get who can manage your claim within an aggregator actually diminishes right you are not able to get the kind of people that you will get let's say if you have 100 customers to founder khud bhi involved hoga claim mein right matlab i'm just giving an example let's say of a startup but when it becomes 1000 to so it'll partially get involved when it becomes 10000 then cannot be involved and as soon as that happens that personal touch goes away and the accountability goes away we i have seen it myself when i ran companies in the past is that it gradually you see that the entire thing becomes very mechanical and very cold right because it's basically someone just doing his job or her job right being in that claims desk compare that to an advisor who uh, like your question was that uh a a advisor will have maybe one company that they deal with and hence you have to stick to that company if you have to choose the advisor or choose the company vaise wala situation hai uh it's better that you first choose the insurance company and the insurance product that you want and then find an advisor for that insurance company and that distributor uh sorry that insurance company or that insurance plan that you want then to go reverse so first discover the product that you need and then find an advisor for that uh for that specific product is the way today you can go through the other way to look at it is there are now a lot of advisors who have stopped being a uh, direct insurance agents for insurance companies and have taken up a different kind of a license where they are able to sell multiple plans right uh there are multiple such kind of licenses that are available one is a broking license the other is a license which is basically called an uh internet insurance marketing firm license which allows you to sell more policies there is a uh, license which is called corporate agents license which allows you to sell even more policies uh and then there is something which is called posp which is being a sub broker of a large another large broker right so there what happens is that they are basically a sub broker to a large broker but they are they are basically accountable to you in terms of services and everything and they source their supply is basically coming from a large aggregator or someone like even a policy bazaar or probably or there are other such large aggregators who now have a sub broking department where they are allowing other agents to sell their products that is also a choice that can be made these are people who would have multiple products in their basket so this is one choice so one is go product first the other is find an advisor who has multiple products yes sir uh there's a point you touched upon uh, hospital billing right so there are two points of view some people have this perception right. if you have a life health insurance right uh, the hospital will inflate bills yes the other point of view is since tpa or the insurance company will check the hospital will be more reasoned when they are uh, charging you right. for stuff right. so which point of view is correct and what is your experience right more uh, the the higher probability is that you will be charged more uh, than charged less this is coming out of experience there is no data statistics that is available for me to basically say this uh, uh, but from my own experience i have seen is that there is a clear uh, case of inflation of bills that happens uh, and treatments that happen and medical tests that are added uh, once a hospital knows that there is a insurance that is covered there is an insurance policy that is backing this uh it is because uh the friction is gone right for the hospital the hospital knows that now the person who is basically the beneficiary is not the person who's paying and hence whatever i'm going to do they are not going to question it right i have had a personal case where my father went through an mri uh for his stomach and the next day 
he went through a x-ray for his stomach right and i asked the i am not a medical professional but i basically using common sense i asked him that bhai agar mri ho gaya hai to uske baad why are you doing a x-ray right so then no no there are certain things that can be found in an x-ray which cannot be found in an mri and i left it at it right but my common sense and i called up a couple of friends and i told them that are ye kya hai matlab i used and they are doctors like i've spoken to a friend who is a is a very big doctor and he said yaar chhod na tu nahi de raha na paisa that is what he told me but this is what is happening that like, this is an example of inflation may not be financial inflation on the charge because now a lot of large hospitals have fixed billing rates and all that so that they also have to take care of their uh, employees not undercharging overcharging so there is a software technology but uh, there is a clear uh, uh you can clearly evidently see that there are more treatments more tests that are added as soon as a uh, insurance comes into picture uh how do you actually deal with this like uh, in terms of a customer uh is another follow up question that i am basically want to touch upon is that uh if i have a limited sum insured uh, my sum insured is very low like for my father uh, probably when we were looking at it he went through like four hospitalizations in one year so we were actually worried about the amount of cover that he has and we have to save that cover for the for any eventuality of one more hospitalization happening right how do you basically take care of that is becoming a challenge right so a lot of people then opt for reimbursement claims not telling the hospital that there is a i have an insurance they take the claim they make the claim and then basically get the money later from the reimbursement that is something that a lot of people are now doing that way I thank you for the presentation. Uh you know you negated the uh, claim settled ratio very early in the presentation. Yeah. yeah. For our DIY or you know someone who's trying to use some common sense, you know, right. how should we adjust that ratio in absence of a good advisor? Right. Right. Uh this may sound like a plug but uh, I'm saying this with a lot of caution. Uh we have created a platform where without a phone number you can basically see all the important parameters about an insurance company without having to enter any like you don't have to log in to see it it's free for everybody uh, which gives you very very important parameters that are available in the disclosure documents of insurance companies that they submit to a regulator that you can use i'll give you an example uh there is something which is called claim settled within 30 days right which is a very which is a qualitative parameter which will tell you how much what percentage of claims is an insurance company settling within 30 days this is a good reflection of basically uh uh whether an insurance company is efficient in settling claims or not versus the broad ratio like claim settlement ratio but there are multiple such ratios like for example complaints is a is a parameter that we analyze how many complaints is an insurance company getting during claims right? that's a that's an additional parameter uh So yeah, so those kind of things can be. You can basically go to the insurance company's website and basically download their public disclosures and find it from there. Or the other way could be you could just go to our website and basically look at those things. Like I said, I, the only reason I'm seeing this is basically that there is no reason there there's no entering a phone number. You have to basically look at. There's nobody who's going to call you or anything like that. Oh hi! First of all, it was a great session. and uh, i just had a question that nowadays many insurance companies are adopting uh, smart contracts so do you feel smart contracts actually help streamline the insurance process or does it act as a disadvantage for them okay i am not aware of smart contracts sorry i i i have no clue about what do you mean by smart contracts so Is smart it? contracts are basically self executory uh, contracts okay. and if something uh happens and the policy gets stick basically it executes by itself it doesn't okay. need many people to go ahead and tell that we need insurance we need insurance huh. we need a claim a insurance claim okay yeah. okay so i don't know whether i'm uh, touching upon the right example but probably you're talking about something like uh uh some insurers who have re- who had introduced uh a travel insurance related claim where let's say if there is a trip delay cover in the policy and uh, this insurance company has information about the delay and if it is basically 
meeting the requirements they directly credit the money in the bank account of the of the customer right is that a is that an example of a smart contract so i have an example sure. basically uh, it was in a farm okay. and if the field crop if something happened to the field right. crop right. they would give an insurance claim right so over here it was through an uh, satellite right and uh, the satellite was not proper or something it did not collect proper information because of which there was problems within the claims so the insurance company had to give more money okay okay so first of all i am not an expert in commercial insurance i don't understand i have not studied commercial insurance my only understanding of uh, insurance is restricted to personal insurance uh, so that's why i am not uh, qualified to answer this question from experience or from my uh, from any any other point of view yeah so sorry about that so my uh, my my question is uh, sure uh, health insurance i can understand you buy i have also gone through right two three hospitalizations so i understood right. but uh, when you talk about uh, term insurance right so they come to my daughter or my son uh-huh. and they'll tell you look your father didn't get term insurance uh-huh. when he crossed 55 so you buy at the age of 28 mm-hmm. which means he, they are telling him that you buy because you are a bre- you are going to be a breadwinner at the age of 80 if you die your money will be uh, you know paid to the family right so i don't think 28 year old need term insurance okay it's a complete waste because he is not even married mm-hmm. the girl may or may not marry right so w- why you know term insurance is, and i have seen this trend more and more term insurance is being sold to younger and younger people correct right so it again goes to the thumb rule right uh, the thumb rule point that i mentioned is that this is a thumb rule that buy early and save money right in term insurance okay because term insurance operates very differently compared to a health insurance where you can freeze the premium that you will pay and you buy it early uh, you can basically Uh, save a lot of money right so if i am going to buy at 35 uh, let's say for example to the pitch is this that up 28 pe le lo the premium at 35 is going to be much higher so you will save that money right uh, we've done a lot of these excel calculations about this and what you basically come down to is that you should buy it when you need it right if you do the calculation of basically saving that money that you uh, the difference the delta between a 28 year old and a 35 year old uh, uh, and basically save that delta of the money it's so sorry uh the delta of the money uh whether you should save the delta or whether you should save the entire premium is the question right meaning main nahi pay nahi karunga so i will save the entire money right so we've done those excel calculation and what we've come down to is uh only in two three scenarios you should buy a health uh, or term insurance one is that there is clearly a loan or a liability that is very large that your family will not be able to pay in your absence the second is that there is a visibility of a dependent right uh, that uh, clearly is the reason uh, why you want to buy a policy and third there are a lot of people who want to buy term insurance as a legacy right they want to basically they feel that uh, i i i want to buy it from a logic of basically giving something to my family when i go even if it will not make even if they are completely uh, financially independent i still want to give a legacy so these are the three reasons which sound in some form or the manner uh, reasonable to me when you are looking at term insurance but if they are not one of these reasons right if you don't have any financial dependence if you have enough wealth right to take care of your family even in your absence and uh, third is if you don't have a loan all these three cases are not there then you don't need to buy a term insurance right and and buying early uh, whenever you do that if you do an excel calculation like i said where you show the saving of the premium that you will pay right versus the delta of premium that you pay that you save when you basically buy early oh unis bees mein hi aata hai matlab it does not make a lot of difference that way sure today today i am 28 year old even 35 year old right may not be able to visualize uh-huh. that what kind of cover you will require right when he will be 75 right okay or 85 or whatever the cap mm-hmm. 
Okay. So then in that case, the current now mm-hmm. insurance companies have become very smart. They are saying 10x of the your income. income. Correct. That means nothing. Mm-hmm. When he will be 50, his cover is so low mm-hmm. that he will realize that I need more cover. Right. And when he will go to the market, he will say, Baba, you have blood pressure, you have diabetes, he right. will not give you cover. Right. So, I am just trying to, you know, my question is that, then what is the point of this term policy? I tell you, I tell you. So, only richer people will buy term policy and it will not be useful to them. Uh-huh. And those who are actually need the term policy okay. will not get that. No, so I'll, I'll give you a little different perspective. There's an assumption that you have here, which is the reason why term insurance is supposed to be bought. Is The assumption is that there will be no early death. Your assumption is that there is no early death. But term insurance, basically, I'll, 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 let me, I, I, no, no, let me complete my whole answer. So the reason why you should buy term insurance is to basically cover early death of a breadwinner who basically would have taken care of the family and the lifestyle of that family. And because now of his, in, of his absence, either there are loans to be paid or the lifestyle of the remaining family members is curtailed. Right. The second part of your question is basically, the cover may not be relevant after a particular number of years. So there are two ways to solve it. One is that buy the maximum cover when you're getting it. Right. So it will be a, like you said, typically the cover that you can get if you're an employee, graduate, and uh, uh, let's say having a certain salary uh, would be around 25 times to 30 times of your annual income, right? Uh, a lot of people feel that buying a 1 crore cover as a vanity is great, which is actually not true. You should buy the highest cover possible, even to the to thousands, right? But if you 2 crore, 85 lakh, 32,000, 32, you should buy it, right? Meaning take the highest cover, that is second. Third is there are policies now available which step up your cover every year, right? which is basically called an increasing cover option, where every year your cover can grow by 10% every year, right? So you can easily increase your cover to 2x in 10 years by taking a 10% incre- incremental cover that basically so your cover goes from 1 crore to 1 crore 10 lakhs next year, it goes to 2 crores in 10 years. The last is, it is very important, any insurance policy, because your risks are going to change, because your lifestyle is going to change, because uh, your costs are going to change, uh, it's important to review insurance covers anyway in two specific scenarios. One is every five years, at least you should keep a milestone of uh, looking at reviewing your covers. And second is, in case of any living life event that has happened, right? I have become a father or I have become a mother or I have basically now have bought a bigger house, right? Uh, in those scenarios, you should again review your cover. So this should happen before 50, sir. It should not happen at 50. It should happen at before 40. I think you can reasonably get a very good insurance cover and with in- an incremental cover, like an increasing cover. So that should take care of your requirements. Yeah. We'll take one last question. Okay. Yeah. Coming back to health insurance, uh, is it better to take higher base policy or lower base policy with uh, super top up section? Right. Uh, so our thesis today is very simple. Uh, we think you should buy a base policy of 10 lakhs minimum. Uh, the reason being is that 10 lakhs is a policy where you are getting all the great important Features that we basically talked about. The core features are do not have financial limits. They do not. They 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 uh, uh, are the policy which is having optimal features. Right. Five lakhs today is a little uh, comes into uh, an inferior cover in, in terms of the benefits that you get within that policy. So our suggestion is typically to have a ten lakhs base policy and then buy a super top up on that. Uh, there are two major reasons for this. One obviously is cost. You save money when you take a, a top up instead of buying a high cover, right? That is one thing. Uh, second, which is according to me a very important thing that uh, is, is is something that you should consider, is that uh, a super top up is also a very good backup in the long run. Let's say uh, a lot of us today would be seeing a hike in premium uh, in the last three four years since COVID, right? Uh, and the Hikes for senior citizens is even higher. Right? Today, 
uh, I am paying almost for my father and mother. I pay almost one lakh twenty thousand rupees a year for health insurance. Right? It's not a great. It's not a very big cover. It's like total cover would be around less than ten lakhs. Right? But I pay that much. Right? Uh, this scenario can happen with us also. Right? And probably we may may not have our sons or daughters paying for the premium. Right? Uh, in this kind of a scenario, super top up works as a great stop loss kind of a. Not exactly in that terms, uh, kind of a uh, product where you could basically give away your base policy, which would have a very high premium, and still have that deductible policy, and take care of claims which are above that sum in short. Right, ten lakhs today may look very high as a deductible, but let's say when you put inflation into place in twenty years from now, assuming someone is thirty, at fifty, ten lakhs probably may be almost like four lakhs. Right. So, who take care? हो जाएगा मतलब you can take care of that with your wealth. It it's the high severity claims that you need to take care of, which also beautifully can be taken care by a super top up as a strategy in buying health insurance. Thank you, thank you, Mahavir. Thanks so much. This was like a master class on understanding personal. We really appreciate that you took the time and helped us understand this. So thank you so much, and thank you for the patient listening. It has been one and a half hours. I didn't realize also. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mahavir, the token of appreciation. Please accept. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Whenever things got rough. I always remember what my father used to say. Running a business does test a man, my son. There are ups and downs. Glorious highs, and sometimes a low that leaves you feeling defeated. The character of a man and the character of a business are not very different, are they? Yes. But when the chips are down, we must stand up. Dust ourselves off and motor on. Volatility. It's a funny thing. It makes you question yourself and wonder if you've made all the right decisions. Sure, you can question some of your decisions, but stay steadfast on your goals. Dad always said, "There are no shortcuts and no quick profits. There are no free lunches, are there?" There is only one right way. At PPFS, we think like Rahul and his father. That volatility is a fact of running a business, and buying equity shares is like owning a part of that business. We use value investing principles to manage your money. This means we invest in the right businesses at reasonable prices and for a longer term. PPFAS Mutual Fund. There's only one right way. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.